talks about that. If that's the thing. Um, but uh, Hulda is actually a a, a, whim, a woman prophet uh, who is an immigrant, a refugee from the north. She's living in a suburb of Jerusalem, and she is consulted to basically vet whether or not this scroll found in the wall is true. And of course, she does the very wise thing and says that it is. Because, yeah, yeah, I'm sure her neck was on the line. So we do know that women had a relatively high ranking position of power as prophets. They were not allowed to be priests, but they were allowed to be prophets and they could do things as high level as basically vet scripture. And again, I wanna restate that just so folks hear it. This is a woman vetting the legitimacy of the Bible. That is enormously important in the history of Judaism and in the history of religion, I think more generally, considering how completely excluded women are on almost every level in this historical thing. The ancient Israelites vetted, vetted scripture, vetted the Torah almost as we know it, at least the book of Deuteronomy, by a woman, by the woman Hulda. We know virtually nothing about her, but clearly she was considered to be um, in contact with Yahweh and at least for perhaps political reasons, vetted uh, some sections of the Bible as we know them. Guys always get so excited over this. Wow, a woman actually had a position, a high position in the ancient times. Of course, what this guy, Esoterica, he's, he's a guy who talks about Jewish Kabbalah and mysticism. You know, he's one of those educated men, of course, who believes all the feminist tripe. What he doesn't realize is that this woman, Holda, doesn't have any influence over legal or political policy. You know, so she, women can, men love to give women high positions. Just in ancient times, they were smart enough, they realized the gender dynamics and they wouldn't let women get in positions where they could uh, affect policy because then they would attack their men. As you can see, there's a couple of videos I have in my list, which talks about the UK, uh, women in parliament wanting to put a six o'clock curfew on all men, all men, just because one woman got murdered by one man. And so this is what women in parliament do. And of course, the British men in parliament took it like little bitches. These women were not fired. But in any event, this is what they do. You don't need a war to fight other men when women are in charge. They just attack the men of their country. Here's a video talks about Ernest Belfort Bax, who was basically the, the very beginning of the men's rights movement. And uh, this video, I'll just give the pertinent quotes by him and uh this video started pointing out how women just started getting privileges by 1820 way before you know the the vote issue came up <laughs> and there was one woman who was acquitted for uh, a heinous crime just because she was an attractive woman so let's see what Baxt has to say he was appalled by the situation he found in England that women were committing heinous crimes and being acquitted because of their sex. Yes, that was way back in the early 1900s. First, to identify and classify the two notable hypocrisies of what he called modern feminism. Even he was talking about modern feminism because this is, I believe, early 1900s and feminists came around in the 1800s. So even Baxt was saying, oh, modern feminist is, they're getting out of control. <laughs> he must've thought the originals were, were all right. It sounds familiar, doesn't it, everyone? You hear that being said all the time. Third wave feminists is, is just nuts now. It's not like the second wave that was so cool, but here's Baxt, prior to the second wave saying, look how modern feminism has, has gotten worse. Bax observed that in political feminism, feminists claimed that women were the physical, intellectual, and moral equals of men, and therefore should have the same rights. 
However, he also observed that when women committed heinous crimes or were confronted with danger, that feminists sought for women to receive special treatment because they were weaker than men. Yeah, well, he called out the double standards way back when. Ernest Belford Baxt was vehemently opposed to women's suffrage. He argued that women were not the moral equals of men and cannot be trusted to care for men's interests. Yes, like I just showed you with the 6 p.m. curfew. In the same way, men's notions of chivalry cared for women's interest. And it, he was 100% right back then in the early 1900s. And we see it now everywhere. Men care about women's interest. Women don't care about men's interest because we're used people for them. And they have contempt for us, just an innate contempt. He argued that if women were given the franchise, they would use it to make laws that would oppress and disadvantage men. Well, yes, of course. And that women would seek to rule men as tyrants. And that's exactly what is happening. He called it like there are these rare, rare men who just look at a situation and see it for what it is. This is the true guy who's the true man that every other guy talks about all these trad cons and uses logic. <laughs> and he called it, they, that's exactly what's happening. Women in power, political power, affect the laws to disadvantage men and oppress us for no other reason that they are women, we are men. Now, this is scary, but it aligns with my personal experience. Bax also believed that women were incapable of expressing true remorse. Yes, he noted that women always maintained that whatever crime they committed was justified, that they were experts at blaming the victims of their atrocities. Wow, has he ever called that out? Women do victim blame. He also observed that women who committed heinous crimes would only resort to tears when their justifications could not bear fruit and that their tears were only a manifestation of their self-interest and seeking leniency or acquittal. This is 100% observable truth. And it's scary. It shows you that uh, women know how to manipulate and and they do, they do feel justified in the crimes they do for men. I've seen it in countless videos where some woman attacked her husband and did severe damage. And she says, well, he deserved it. And I don't deserve punishment. And when society gets up and says, okay, uh, you are wrong. Then they start bawling their heads off and trying to gain sympathy. In foregoing pages, we have striven to unmask the shameless imposture, which in the main, this movement represents. Talk about the suffrage movement, right? We have tracked down one dishonest argument after another. We have pointed out how the thinnest and hollowest of sub subterfuges are allowed to pass muster and even to become current coin by dint of unrefuted reiteration. Yes, he's pointing out then the women just continually repeat the lie over and over again. And really, like I said, those women in parliament, they were not fired. You know, men have, most men, and when I say most, the vast majority show no spine. I won't say balls because balls make men spineless. They, men show no spine for their own rights and justice. Men would allow the justice in their system to fall to pieces as long as they pander to a woman. The trick of reversing the facts of a case, as for example, the assertion that man-made law and its administration is unjust to women, and then raising a howl of indignation at the proposition position of affairs they picture, such being, of course, a diametrical opposite of the real facts. All this has been exposed. It's been exposed 
but it hasn't changed anything because he's exposed it back in the early 1900s. Fast forward 100 years and it's still going on. That's why the guys were right when they said feminism is the, the most successful political movement in all of history. In conclusion, I can only express the hope that honest, straightforward men who have been bitten by feminist wiles will take pause and reconsider their position. Whatever sentiment or sympathy they may have had with the aims of the movement intrinsically. Wow, he would be rolling over his in his grave if he if you could bring him back in time, you know, to the future before he died and show him this he would probably go and shoot himself. <laughs> because after a hundred years, he would say nothing has changed. Everything has changed, but nothing has changed. It ought not to be too much to expect them to view with contempt and abhorrence the mass of disingenuous falsehood and transparent, yes, subterfuge. It is transparent, everyone. Men just don't want to believe it. They can't deal with the fact that Women see the men in contempt, <clears throat> which the votaries of feminism systematically seek to palm off upon the public opinion, only too easily gullible in this matter as true fact and valid argument. Right. Alfred Bax, I don't think he had any idea of just how bad his fellow man was, or is in this case. That's why, I mean, look, I if I was back then, I'd be just as gullible. I was just as gullible now. You, you, men have to find out the hard way. He didn't even know, like even as smart as Baxt was, even he didn't realize just how sad his fellow man was. Here he was spouting the truth a hundred years ago. And uh, he would have seen this stuff go on and on and on, just like I am seeing it go on and now. Men refuse to, to work together. They refuse to stand up. Men have the lizard brain instinct of just saying, okay, a woman wants this. How do I give it to her? Even if I don't get anything out of it. And th that's what men are lemmings is from what I can say. So anyway, we, we showed... Ernest, uh, he was a very honest man. He, he, he saw things for what they were. And I'll put this whole video in, in the description box and you can watch the whole thing. Because like I say, these guys have, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to, how to end this actually. It's like, he must be rolling over in his grave. And frankly, men should be ashamed. If men were capable of feeling shame, see you around.